mental conditioning is a method of learning that employs rewards and punishments for behavior. Through operant conditioning, an association is made between a behavior and a consequence, whether positive or negative, for that behavior. Reinforcement and punishment are the two major categories of consequences in operant conditioning. In this video, I'm going to describe positive and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcers are favorable events or outcomes that are presented after the behavior. In positive reinforcement situations, a response or behavior is strengthened by the addition of praise or a direct reward. If you do a good job at work and your manager gives you a bonus, that bonus is a positive reinforcer. Negative reinforcers involve the removal of an unfavorable event or outcome after the display of a behavior. In these situations, a response is strengthened by the removal of something considered unpleasant. For example, if a child were to start to scream in the middle of a restaurant, but the parent were to give them a treat, that action would lead to the removal of the unpleasant condition, negatively reinforcing your behavior or the parent's behavior, not the child's. We can find examples of operant conditioning all around us. For example, if we study for a test and we receive a good grade, our behavior of studying has been positively reinforced with the good grade. After playing a musical instrument in front of an audience, perhaps you receive an applause from the audience and this then acts as a positive reinforcer, inspiring you to seek more opportunities to perform your music in front of others. You might train your dog to fetch by offering him praise and praise him whenever he performs the behavior correctly. This is another positive reinforcer. These examples are each positive because something was added. The praise, for example. And these examples are each reinforcement because there was an increase in the behavior. For positive reinforcement to be effective, the reinforcer should be presented immediately after the behavior so that the connection between the behavior and the reinforcer is made. The reinforcer being used should also be something that the individual or the animal likes. Since not all people like the same thing, it's important to identify what will be most motivating for the individual. And the same thing is true for animals. One type of positive reinforcer could be the use of a token or ticket that is received when the desired behavior occurs, and then this could later be traded in for something that the individual likes. This is known as a token economy. This is sometimes used in classrooms where children are rewarded with tokens or tickets for such desired behaviors as turning in one's homework on time or helping a classmate or helping to clean up the classroom at the end of the day. The same type of system is sometimes used by parents who may seek to increase certain behaviors in their children. The behaviors would vary depending upon the child's age and may be as simple as brushing one's teeth to something one might expect from a school-age child like doing homework or putting laundry away. While positive reinforcers involve the addition of a favorable event after the display of the behavior, Negative reinforcers involve the removal of an unfavorable event or outcome after the display of the behavior. So they involve the removal of something that a person or animal does not like. So in these situations, responses are strengthened by the removal of something that is considered unpleasant. An example of this might be a driver. Upon sitting down in the car, this driver might hear the sound that is reminding them to put on their seatbelt. The sound repeats itself until the driver puts on the seatbelt. The sound is typically unpleasant or annoying, and so the person is negatively reinforced when they put their seatbelt on. The sound is removed, and again, that sound is unpleasant, so something unpleasant is removed, and the behavior is strengthened so that in the future, the driver knows to put on their seatbelt in order to remove the seatbelt reminder sound. Another example of negative reinforcement that each of us have likely experienced is the removal of a headache when we take a pain relieving medication like ibuprofen or aspirin. The removal of the headache is the removal of something unpleasant, 
And this then strengthens the behavior of taking the pain relieving medication in the future. On the surface, it may seem like this is positively reinforcing since we're adding medication, but it's not the addition of the medication itself that is strengthening the behavior. It's the removal of the headache. The key with negative reinforcement is that there is the removal of something unpleasant, and this then results in the behavior being strengthened. So there you have it. Positive and negative reinforcement both result in a strengthening of the behavior, but positive reinforcement involves the addition of something pleasant or favorable, and negative reinforcement involves the removal of something unpleasant. We can find examples of these types of operant conditioning at work all around us. Consider the case of a child completing homework to earn a reward from a parent or teacher, or employees finishing projects to receive praise or promotions. Next, I'll explain positive and negative punishment.